Hello YouTube, this is Said Mirza. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from what I've been doing uh, earlier. In this video, I will be going through uh, chapter 1 and a little bit of chapter 2 to uh, what I'm going to be striving for is to give you an exposition about uh, uh, key ideas from Sam Guerin's work in regards to uh, the translation of the Quran and um, uh, you definitely would need to download his work uh, which is available for free from Quranite.com and um, you know we'll go through uh, each uh, verse and uh, I will be using his translation and uh, giving you some uh, background information and expositions as we go along and dep depending on the response I might um, go out, go and do more of these videos but we'll see how it goes so let's start with chapter 1 which is called Al-Fatiha which means the opening and uh, according to Sam Garens it's uh, really what it is it's a pledge of allegiance for the believer where God is making a, a covenant with man um, about what he needs to do and what God will do for him um, so that's why he's referring it to as a pledge of allegiance so let's start with uh, this chapter 1 Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful. Now, the word Al-Rahman is usually translated as uh, the Beneficent or Merciful or the Gracious or something along that line. Um, Sam went through all, all these occurrences uh, in the Quran and uh, to him the word Al-Rahman means the Almighty. And I agree with him uh, because they, I, I made a video about this as well. The word Ar-Rahman cannot mean the the beneficent or gracious because some places where the word is used, uh, it uh, does not sign it denote someone who is gracious. It denotes someone who is almighty, uh, who, who is the most powerful. Okay, to continue. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hamd means uh, praise, glory. Uh, Rabb means sustainer, Lord. So we have praise belongs to God, the Lord of all mankind. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And this is from the Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And he's translated as the Almighty, the Merciful. Maliki Yawmid Deen. Now Malik, is, Malik means king, um, ruler. And uh, obviously he's translating it as a master. But the general concept is someone who is a king, who has dominion, who has control. Okay, now it's saying Maliki Yawm with Deen. And Deen, uh, this word is uh, usually translated as religion. Uh, it can also mean uh, doctrine, uh, which is what Sam uh, translated at, at some of his... Uh, translation uh, down the line here he's translating deen as judgment and uh, what he's what he means by that is that uh, you know he just wants to kind of keep it simple but the, the word deen is is basically a doctrine in the sense that every man has a deen in that he is uh, if you're if you're making if you're trying to make money that's your deen if you're um, you know, interested in in this life, that's your dean, and so a de any man's dean can be judged by his actions, and so on the day of uh, of this dean, Malik Yomidin, master of the day of dean, uh, everything will be opened up, and uh, your deeds will be visible. So in that sense, it's got, uh, you will be. Um, uh, whatever you've done will be visible to you and so this is what it's referring to Sam translated it as master of the day of judgment and just as a quick aside the the word Dean is uh, the root the root the general idea in the root is that uh, it is uh, a debt that is repaid so you know God has give we're indebted to God because he has created us and on the day of judgment he, you know our, our deeds will be repaid in full so in that sense too it would mean um, the day of recompense but just to keep it simple uh, it's saying master the day of judgment uh, and here Sam is translating this as Thee alone will we serve, and from thee alone will we seek help. <clears throat> now what's interesting, uh, and I just want to make a quick note, is that uh, in Arabic, um, you have you and thee, and these are different concepts. Obviously, over time, we've, we've you know, made languages a lot more dumber, but what thee means is it's talking, referring to one 
person one-on-one. -on -one. So if you and I are talking, and then I can use, you know, if I'm addressing you, I'll say thee, because it's just you. But if there's a group of people, then I cannot use the word thee because I'm addressing a group of people. And that's when you use the word you. So when we're saying, when he, in his translation, when he's doing thee, uh, what he's saying, what he's referring to is a one-on-one. -on -one. So it, this is a contract between man and God. So it's me personally. When I say thee alone, I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm referring, I'm addressing God alone. So in that sense is what, how the thee is used. And... Um, I'll, expo uh, I'll, I'll give you more examples of these as we get along, but for now, this makes sense. Thee alone will we serve, and from thee alone will we seek help. Ahdana salatu mustaqim. Okay, now we get to um, God's, God's part of the agreement. Okay, so in the beginning, we, we glorified God. Praise belongs to God, the Lord of all mankind, the Almighty, the Merciful, Master, the Judgment. This are, these are God's attributes. And I'll, I'll tell you why this is important later on. So this was the first part of the Fatiha. Okay, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Uh, this, these, are, um, these are God's um, invocations where we're addressing God and we're glorifying Him. Okay, uh, and then this is the part, this is our part of the agreement thee alone will we serve and from thee alone will we seek help okay now we get to god's uh part of the agreement okay guide thou us to the straight path so we are asking god that show us the right path okay and the path of those whom thou hast favored okay and this 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 piece the path of those whom thou has favored this opens up in chapter two and we'll go through that and you'll see uh what these who these favored are and 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 so just going down the translation i'm going uh, not of those who incur wrath okay ghadab, ghadab means wrath anger so guide guide us guide thou us to the straight path the path of those whom thou hast favored not of those who incur wrath wala duali, nor of those who go astray now these these are three different groups okay you have them whom thou hast favored then you have those who incur wrath and then those who go astray okay and um this opens up in chapter two, but I'll just give you a little bit of summary here. The, whom thou hast favored, this is the uh, uh, the believers, okay? Uh, those who incur wrath, these are the disbelievers, and those who go astray, these are also the disbelievers. But these are two specific groups within the disbelievers, um, and we'll open, and this will open up in chapter two. So uh, we're just gonna move forward because uh, uh, you understand what I'm saying once we go in chapter two. Okay, so we start with chapter two. Bismillah uh, rahim in the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful. Alif lam mim. Okay, alif lam mim. This is muqattat. A lot has been said, a lot has been written about what they mean. Nobody really knew what was going on. Everyone was coming up with their own theories. Sam has cracked this code, uh, the Muqattat, and I have gone through his code, and it, it, it makes perfect sense. So I do recommend that you read his work. He explains this Muqattat in detail on how he went about it, and it makes perfect sense what he's doing. But what he's what he, what he what the idea is that Alif is referring to... Um, a specific, it's a symbol, okay? So alif, lam, meme. These are all symbols, and they refer to certain parts in the Quranic text, okay? Now, just so I'll go back to this mukatta in a bit, but let's continue on. Zalik al kitab fihi hudan lil muttaqin. Okay, so that now zalika. This this word mostly translators are going through, and they're saying zalika as this. And if you know anything about Arabic, hada means this zalika means that so this is zalika means that and and why this is important because it's saying that al-kitab which is usually translated as the book uh, is actually means co a covenant um uh, a law okay so zalika that is the covenant about which there is no doubt guidance for 
muttaqin for those of prudent fear so i'll just go to sam's translation here that is the covenant about which there is no doubt guidance for those of prudent fear now what we're seeing here is that this uh, in the beginning the zalika that is referring to the alif lam meme okay because when we say that we're referring to something that has preceded obviously so we have alif lam mim and then alif is actually the uh, uh, chapter one's uh, first part okay like i told you there were three parts to chapter one right that was god's uh, um identification of god and his might and his power so we have alif is representing in the name of god the almighty the merciful praise belongs to god the lord of all mankind the almighty the merciful master day of judgment okay La lam is our con is our contract thee alone will be served and from thee alone will we seek help okay and meme is god's part of the contract of the covenant okay meme guide thou us to a straight path the path of those whom thou hast favored not of those who incur wrath nor of those who go astray so this is what alif lam mim means okay and again i refer you to sam's work and you can look at it in detail um just giving you a quick summary here okay so we have that is the covenant about which there is no doubt guidance for those of prudent fear the covenant is al-fatiha the, the opening the chapter okay this is uh, this is the covenant about which there is no doubt guidance for those of prudent fear okay so this is the, what we are to hold to this is this is our pledge okay going forward okay okay now it's defining it is giving you the characteristics of the muttaqin okay uh, and i give full credit to sam for uh, introducing me and, and to how uh, honestly I read the Quran many times, but I did not give it that much um, attention. And you really have to meticulously go through the Quran and keep the context in mind and keep going forward and kind of see, okay, what is going on here? So we have the covenant, which was Al-Fatiha. And this, is, this covenant is guidance for the Muttaqeen, which Sam is translating as those are prudent fear. Um, basically they fear God okay and this is the, these are this these are the descriptors of the muttaqin who they are Allahzina those okay those who believe in the unseen salat now the word salat if you've watched any of my previous videos you know that the, this is not the 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 ritual you know jumping up and down that muslims do five times a day nothing to do with that uh the salat is the duty is how sam is translating it and um, it makes perfect sense what he what he's um what his position is and i just want to add that uh, whenever the word the, the quran is using the word salat if you look in the context usually it's telling you what that what it, what that means like what what because salat is duty right so um and then we'll go forward but basically what sam is saying is that salat is like sabr because they're used in the same verse so if sabr means patience and salat cannot mean a ritual prayer it has to mean something abstract an abstract noun like duty and I agree with this analysis 100%. Anyway, so going forward, those who believe in the unseen salat, and they establish and they establish the duty. And out of uh, what we have given them, they spend. So I'll go to Sam's translation here. Those who believe in the unseen and uphold the duty and spend of what we provide them. Okay. And these are the characteristics of the muttaqin the the ones of the the ones who are in prudent fear okay wallazina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablika wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun okay and now we get we we see more of these characteristics of the those of prudent fear wallazina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka and those who believe in what is sent down to thee and what was sent down before thee and of the here after are certain so this is important they they not only believe in the quran they believe in what was sent down before the quran and they are of the hereafter they are 100 percent certain 
okay so the, this is this is what I'm saying that certainty means that you are willing to sacrifice everything for something okay so it's not just saying yeah yeah you know there's a God and and we'll, we'll go through big, big, this is important because we're 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 this this is giving you the descriptions of these people okay these are upon guidance okay hudan and and this word um hudan and if you go back you see this word hudan is used in chapter 2 verse 2 where it says um zalik al kitabu la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin so that is the covenant about which there is no guide there is no doubt guidance for those of prudent fear um, it's used here again. It says, min rabbihum. These are upon guidance from their Lord. Wa muflihun. And these are the successful. So this is the descriptor for the muttaqin. Okay, now we move on. Oh, just a quick aside. So these, these were the muttaqin. Now if you go back to chapter 1, Al-Fatiha, you have here... Um, chapter uh, obviously chapter 1 verse 7 you have the path of those whom thou hast favored okay now these are the people that were just explained the muttaqin are the ones that god has favored okay not of those who incur wrath we're going now now we pick up in chapter 2 verse 6 not of those who incur wrath so this is the second group these these are three groups in chapter 1 verse 7 the path of them who of those whom thou hast favored these are the muttaqin not of those who incur wrath these are the ones who are indifferent to warning and in the arabic it's in the lazina kafaru okay and the third one is not of those who go astray and these are the kafirin which sam has rendered as spurn guidance while claiming virtue so these are three separate groups and the quran is defining these groups that is giving you the characteristics so you know okay so we know what's going on okay so we have not of those who incur at and which are which are explained in chapter 2 verse 6 in the lazina kafaru those who are indifferent to warning okay so they don't really care they're in in, in more in modern parlance we would say they're agnostics or atheists they don't really care, you know, you whether there is a God or not doesn't make any difference to them. So Alayhum It is the same to them whether thou wantest them or thou hast not warned them. La they do not believe. Okay? They don't care, they don't believe. They, that's why Sam is translating them as uh, those who are indifferent to warning in the Lazina Kafaru. Because in, in Islam, in the religion of Islam, kafaru and kafirin, they're all the same. It's just disbeliever, infidel, whatever, you know. Um, but the Quran is is explaining this uh, in a way that we can understand what, what it's talking about. Okay. So these are the ones who are indifferent to warning. And uh, they do not believe whether you warn them or do not warn them. They don't really care. Okay. Moving forward. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Okay, God has put a seal on their hearts. Khatam means seal. Okay, whose hearts God has sealed, wa Allah him, and whose hearing, wa Allah absalihim khishwatan, and over whose sight is a covering, wa lahum azabun azim, and they have a tremendous punishment. So God, God has sealed their hearing and their sight, and so they have a tremendous punishment. Okay, so this was the in the Lazina Kafaru, who, if you go back to chapter one, verse seven, in the uh, second part, they referred to as not of those who incur wrath. Okay, so they have incurred the wrath of God, and they have a tremendous punishment, and they have incurred the wrath of God because God has sealed their hearing and their sight. Now we move forward, last group. Uh, chapter 1 verse 7 nor of those who go astray okay now this is the last group to continue chapter 2 verse 8 and among uh, and among men is he who says 
No, this is this is this is important. Okay, the the those who are indifferent to warning, they don't care. So they just straight up say, you know, we don't believe in a god. We're atheists. We're agnostics. You know, we're trying to find ourselves. Whatever. But here we have people who are actually claiming they believe in God in the last day. So this is what I'm saying. There's there's a difference between the in the lazina kafaru and bil kafirin. Okay. وَمِنَ النَّاسُ مَنْ يَقُولُ And among men is he who says, آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ We believe in God and the last day. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are not believers. Okay? Now, now look around you. You're going to find a lot of these people. They say they believe in God and the last day, but what do they do? They do absolutely nothing. They just sit and watch TV, okay? Or, you know, they go and, you know, make a living or whatever, you know? But at the end of the day, they don't really believe in the last day. They don't really strive for it. Going forward, Okay, they would deceive God and those who heed warning. Okay, Allazina what Lazina Amanu is he's translating it as those who heed warning or the believers, if you will. And and this group was already identified in the first in the first verse so, uh, in the beginning of chapter two, you know, the Allazina Amanu, these are the ones who believe in the unseen, uphold the duty span of what we provide them. Uh, just as a quick aside, the Quran places a lot of emphasis on spending money um, for the needy and in God's cause. Um, and I, that point is not really... It's missed in the religion of Islam when in, in the Quran it's a central feature of being a moment of, of serving God that you spend in His cause. Anyway... Okay, so يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They would deceive God and those who heed warning. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفَسُهُمْ But they deceive only themselves. وَمَا يَشْعَرُونَ And they perceive not. So this group of people, they are deceiving themselves and they don't realize. So, you know, if you tell them, if they say to you, you know, we believe in God, and you say, no, you don't believe in God. You're not doing anything. You're just, you know, just wasting your life. And they'll come back and say, no, we believe. What are you talking about? Because God, they are deceiving themselves and they perceive not. So they, and this is why if we go back, it says, not of those who go astray. So these are people who have gone astray, okay? In their hearts is disease. Fazaduhum Allahu Marzan. So God increases them in, in disease. So this is this is a this is a problem for them, right? They, 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 their hearts are diseased, okay? And God increases them in disease. Because um and w when we go through in the Quran, we'll see what this means. God increases them in disease because God God helps you if you want to serve Him, if you want to go on the right path, and if you want to go on the wrong path, God helps you in that too. So this is what it's saying: because their hearts are diseased, God increases them in disease. Wallahum azabun alim bimaqanu yakzibun, and they have a painful punishment for that about which they lied. So because they are lying to themselves, right? They have a painful punishment for that. Okay, now we're going to see more of these characteristics of these uh, kafirin. Okay, and, and uh, why I'm saying kafirin is because at the end, God refers to them as the kafirin. Okay, so we had the believers, the those who believe in the unseen. Then we have those who are indifferent to warning. They don't care what you have to say. They're not going to believe because God has sealed their hearing and heart and sight. And then we have those who say we believe in God, but they don't really believe and they are deceiving themselves. Um, and in their hearts is disease. Now let's go and let's look at what else they do. And when it is said to them, work not corruption in the earth. They say we are but those who do right. Okay, so this is this is interesting because a lot of people, you know, they're using religion as sort of a way um to justify their actions killing people and all that sort of nonsense so it's saying to them when it is said to them work not corruption in the earth they say we are but those who do right because they are deceiving themselves in truth <clears throat> it is they who are the workers of corruption but they perceive not so 
they are the workers of corruption but they perceive and when it is said to them believe as mankind believes they say should we believe as the fools believe as the foolish believe so they think that the that mankind i mean we're talking general mankind not a specific group you know because if you think about and this is this is uh, i uh, i give full credit I, a lot of these things that i'm talking about they're based on his book the work and they're not my idea so i just want to be clear on that uh, he makes a good point he's saying that uh you know most of mankind uh, usually people believe in a god okay and what what the argument here is that when it is said to them believe as mankind believes so when it is said to these people who think they're special hey you know why don't you believe in one god in the last day and do good deeds they say should we believe as the fools believe so they think that the, the generality of mankind is fools and then they alone have the truth okay going forward they say shall we believe as a foolish belief in truth, it is they who are the foolish. But they know not. And when they meet those who heed warning, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their shaitans, they say, we are with you, we are but mocking. So, I'm not going to comment on this too much because honestly, it's referring to a specific subset of groups and, you know, they know what they're doing. Okay, Allahu yastahziyu bihum, God mocks them. وَيُمَدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهُمْ يَعْمَهُونَ And assists them in on wandering blindly in their inordinancy. So they think they are mocking those who believe by wearing a cloak of righteousness, by being believers, by wearing, you know, by growing a beard or by, you know, putting on a cross or whatever. And they think they're deceiving the believers and God, but they are deceiving themselves. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to say on that subject. These are they who sell guidance for error. So their transaction profits not. And they are not rightly guided. So, whoever, so these people, the kafirin, who are deceiving themselves they have sold guidance for error so what that means is that they do have guidance so they have access to guidance but this they have sold it for error and in other places it says those who sell uh, the pledge of God for a cheap price so their transaction profits them not and they are not rightly guided now we have an example of who these people are and, and what, what state of condition they are in. Their example is like the example of one who kindles a fire. Okay, so someone who's starting a fire. And when it has illuminated round about him. So he started a fire and starting to give out light. He's trying to, he's, he's seeing things, things around him. God takes away their light and leaves them in darkness. They do not see. Now I've thought a lot about what this um, example means. And um, I, for me personally, my, my understanding is that it's talking about like man and thinking that man has some sort of control over what is going on. So let's take the example of science you know you have physicists arguing debating for thousands of years you know matter light energy this that every day there's a new theory there's a old theory string theory m theory whatever so it's referring to them that basically that they're starting to they started a fire to see right but they don't understand that they have they don't really have much um knowledge they don't have anything to go on so for them um 
they started a fire and then God took away their fire so they're blind again because ultimately God is the one who's giving light God is the one who gives knowledge so man cannot depend upon himself um, and this is what these people think that the, these kafirin that we are you know we, we are the masters of our destiny and we don't really need anyone and we can un understand how the world works how the universe works and we there's we can explain away God blah 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 well, guess what? You started a fire and it illuminated right around about you and then God took away your fire and left you in darkness. And this is this is interesting because, you know, I used to follow a lot of these theories back in the day. Um, and, and nobody's been able to crack anything. Honestly, if you look at what they're talking about, theory of relativity and uh, string theory, theory and M theory and this and that and electrons and positrons and protons, Every day, dark matter, you know, that's something new coming up. It's like, you know, these guys, they come up with these theories and then God takes away their light, leaves them in darkness. They go back to a drawing board and come up with some other new theory to explain the universe. But they can't do anything. They don't know. They don't understand. Time is running out for them. And, you know, it would be better if they, you know, actually accepted that they don't have anything. They don't have knowledge and ask God for guidance. But anyway, that's kind of an aside. Let's go forward. Summa bukum. Summa bukmun umma fahum la yuljoon. Deaf, dumb, blind, they will not return. Okay. Awkasi wa mina samai fi hi zulumatun wa laadun wa barqun. Or like a thunder cloud from the sky wherein is darkness, thunder, and lightning. Yajaluna sa'abihum fi azanihum min sawayak hazar al maut. They thrust their fingers in their ears against the thunderbolts for fear of death. God encompasses those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue. So right here we have the conclusion and the definition is complete for those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue, which uh, is the bil, which is the kafirin. Okay. So the kafirin, God encompasses them. Okay, and that they are afraid of death. And they are they are in darkness basically, and they're scared, so they put their fingers in their ears because they fear death. Okay, yakadul baruk yaktuf absaruhum. The lightning nigh snatches away their sight. Kullu mazalahum wa shofihi. Whenever it gives them light, they walk therein. And when it darkens against them, they stand. And had God willed, He would have taken away their hearing and their sight. God is powerful over all things. So they're stumbling to and fro. They don't really have any path to follow down on um, because they don't have the light from God. And it and then every time the light comes, they walk, and then when they're in darkness, they stand. Okay, now we move on to, so these were the descriptors, okay? So this is where I'm uh, going to stop for now. Um, we're at the 30-minute 30 mark anyway. So, uh, God willing, I'll continue from here, but... Um, Again, the priority here is to read the Quran for yourself. Um, there are tools available now, and Sam's work is excellent. And I definitely recommend that you download his work and go through it and uh, make an attempt to understand the Quran. Uh, it's a beautiful book, and there's a lot of wisdom in it. So I hope this video helps. Uh, may God guide you to straight path. Peace be upon you.